EPIRB is an abbreviation for Emergency Position Indicating Radio Beacon. And this is a common term for equipment that with the use of different kinds of technologies transmits a signal that you are in distress and you need help. Uh, the first uh, EPIRBs for ships uh, transmitted signals uh, at the frequencies 121.5 and, and 243 MHz, frequencies that were monitored uh, by aircraft. Uh, this resulted in limited coverage and low reliability. You were dependent on the fact that there was an aircraft in the vicinity. Uh, and it was realized that EPIRBs should be developed that used satellites uh, for coverage. Cospas Sarshot was commissioned in, the, in 1980 by the United States, Canada, France and the Soviet Union. It's a very uh, nice Cold War uh, phenomenon. Um, and used a frequency of 406 megahertz. Komischeskaya Systema Poiska Avarinic Sudov, that's Russian I believe, search and rescue satellite aided tracking. So it's not a short and snappy abbreviation but it's still known as Kospasarshot EPIRB. Uh, and today all ships that are subject to radio duty, this is GMDSS ships, are required to carry a Kospasarshot EPIRB. Uh, in case one of these things uh, is indicated, the signal path, uh, it's transmitted from the EPIRB on board uh, from the ship, signal goes to the satellite, then it goes down to a less land earth station, which then transmits it to um, a rescue control center uh, who then um, uh, who then uh, initiate a, a search and rescue um, effort using the available resources in the relevant area. Uh, a Kosposarshot system is based on the fact that the EPIRB has uh, programmed the maritime mobile service identity of the vessel. Uh, Originally, it was only based on what's known as LEOSAR, Low Earth Orbit SAR satellite systems, which were uh, low Earth, uh, low orbit satellites that calculated the positions of the EPIRB using Doppler shift. Uh, originally, there were six uh, satellites and they had an orbital period of one hour and 40 minutes, so a very low orbit. Uh, they, circ they went around the Earth in just one hour and 40 minutes. Uh, so if a uh, LEOSAR satellite uh, received a signal, it would then forward the distress signal uh, with a calculation of the position to LEOLUT, Low Earth Orbit Local User Terminal, when it was within sight. So these were uh, land-based stations when uh, around the world. And the positional accuracy of the Doppler shift positioning was about 2 kilometers. Eventually, uh, we also had GEOSAR uh, introduced into the Cosmos Sarshot system. These are geostationary SAR satellite system. So, geostationary search and rescue satellite system, that's GEOSAR. Um, these use geostationary satellites outside of the equator, uh, and these provided real time alarming up to about 80 degrees of latitude north and south. Uh, LEOSAR satellite. Uh, didn't have um, real-time alarming, you could risk that the satellite would receive the signal and then would have to travel for a bit before it was able to forward the signal uh, to a LEOLUT. But when you had GEOSAR, uh, these satellites were able to see the entire uh, world up to 80 degrees of latitude and uh, as such could provide real-time alarming so that whenever you activated your uh, EPIRB, the alarm would go uh, directly down to uh, a land station. But the GEOSAR uh, satellites were not able to calculate your position since they were standing still above the Earth. So then uh, it was dependent on the fact that uh, the EPIRB needed to have a GPS built in. And today new EPIRBs they very often have a GPS or GNSS receiver built in so that they transmit both the MMSI number of the vessel as well as a GNSS position. Uh, in the near future, maybe already, we expect that most navigation satellites will have a Kospasarshot receiver um, as well in the satellite. What we see here are the footprints of uh, the LEOSAR low earth orbit satellites. So because these satellites are in such a low orbit, they only have a, a limited uh, footprint. They only cover a limited part of the earth at any time, but they do move very fast. One, uh, one hour and 40 minutes to orbit the earth. 
um, we, there we see the geostationary uh, satellites, uh, their footprints, and we see that they have coverage everywhere up to uh, about 80 degrees north-south. Uh, when you have introduced uh, cross pulsar shot receivers on um, uh, GNSS satellites uh, such as Galileo, GLONASS, GPS, uh, this will be called MEOS, or Middle Earth Orbit Search and Rescue Satellite Systems, uh, which will uh, provide even better coverage. A cross pulsar shot air pair transmits a signal at 406 megahertz. This signal goes to the satellites and it usually transmits at 121.5 megahertz, um, a homing signal that goes to aircraft as well. Um, the the air pair consists of a digital log logic unit, a transmitter, an antenna, a power supply, and very often a GNSS receiver. It can be activated manually, automatically, free float, or in some cases by remote triggering. Uh, typically placed in a free float bracket that will release if the ship sinks. We'll, we'll see an example later. Uh, and the EAPIRB and the free float bracket should be inspected regularly. Um, the EAPIRB should be tested monthly according to uh, guidelines and should be submitted every five years to the manufacturer for uh, um, inspection and possibly change of battery. Uh, the battery and the hydrostat release in the free float unit, they have a, a best before date that needs to be adhered to. Uh, and the battery on an EPIRB should be able to power the EPIRB for at least 48 hours. So this is a free float bracket we see there. What we see here is an EPIRB in the free float bracket. We take out the pin to open uh, the, uh, the free float container. We see the hydrostat at the top there. Um, the hydrostat can open it very switches on the test, you get one big flash, indicates that it's done a self-check and that everything's in order. Uh, we see the free f uh, the hydrostat there. If the hydrostat uh, comes four meters below water, it will release so that the uh, cover that we initially saw taken off will uh, fall off and then the EAPIRB can float to the surface. Um, you have the water switches here, contact points, when they are immersed in water, uh, it will be activated automatically. So it will uh, float up to the surface and then be activated.